morning families i just want to do a video on how to mark your washer and dryer so my washer and dryer are he machines um which means that they are both front load and don't my washer is front load and doesn't have an agitator my dryer is also front load so um i like this setup because um my washers very, washer and dryer are very low to the ground so it makes it easy for my kids to be able to get their laundry in and out i don't like it because um, it is not um, tactually accessible. So if you have a traditional machine with an agitator um, and the um, radial dials that click and you're able to line the arrows up with your delicate um, normal or um, heavy soil cycles and your wash temperature, um, that is definitely more ideal. This is a little bit more of a challenging setup for a visually impaired or blind student. So let's talk about how you would do this, these machines. Um, so first, of course, you always want to have your kiddo explore a empty machine with supervision. So teach them about how to open the door, the way the door feels, the inside, the length of the washer, the width of the washer, the height of the washer. With an HE machine like this, when it's not in use, the door should stay open. That's a little bit challenging for our blind kiddos because we typically teach them to keep their um, doors that they're not using um, all the way open or all the way closed so that they're not in danger of hitting something. Um, so teach them about that and that this will be open if it's not in use. So um, the dials on my machine, um, this is the power button. I've marked it with a tactile sticker. This is the start and pause button. I've marked that with a different tactile sticker. So my dials light up, there's no arrow to click. So the first click always defaults to the cotton normal cycle. So that would be click one. So the I use that cycle quite a bit. I also use the white cycle, the sanitary cycle, the towels, and the delicate cycle. Those are the ones that I use the most. Um, on my touchpad over here, I use the delay wash, which I have marked with an orange bump dot in the upper right hand corner and the soil level button, which I've marked with a bump dot in the upper right hand corner. That's a rectangle and it's flat. So you can get these kinds of um, dots at most big box retailers. I think I got those at Meijer um, in the section where you can buy like furniture pads for chairs. These go on the bottom of appliances. Um, like little feet so that they don't scratch the countertop. So those are the ones that I use. It's important to not over mark your machine um, with things that you don't use a lot because it makes it chaotic and cluttered and it's difficult for our kiddos to be able to um, read through that information to be able to get to what they need. So if you are going to utilize this um, dial, one click is cotton normal. If you turn to the left, two clicks, three clicks, you get to the white cycle, four to the sanitary. If you turn the machine off and then back on, it will again, first click defaults to cotton normal, click two, three, four, goes to delicates, and five to towels. So if we move over to the dryer, I've marked the power button with the same tactile sticker that I did over on the washer. The start pause button is the same on the dryer as it is on the washer. Because these machines are a set, it um, is easy because the dials correlate. So if we turn it on, the first click defaults to cotton normal. If we turn to the left, two, three, four, it's the antibacterial cycle, which would correspond to the fourth click to the left on the sanitary cycle on the washer. If you turn it off and back on, first click defaults to the cotton normal, two, three, four, the fourth click uh, correlates to the delicate cycle, which it does on the washer. The fifth click correlates to the towels like it does on the washer. So if your kiddo has some trouble memorizing these things or remembering them, it's okay to make a cheat sheet. 
So over here on the touchpad, I have not marked anything because I don't use any of these things hardly ever. So show your kiddos um, how do you add detergent to your washer and dryer. If you have um, a standard machine or a front or a top load machine um, where they would put the detergent, whether that's in a special compartment or if it's directly into the um, basin of the washing machine. In this machine, we have a drawer, it has four compartments. Um, this one's for the detergent. You take this little cup thing out if you're gonna use a powder. There's a pre-wash section, so if you're gonna put a color safe bleach in, that's where you would do that. A softener compartment and a chlorine liquid bleach section. Um, I don't I haven't taught my personal children about this compartment at all because we hardly ever use chlorine bleach. And if we did, I wouldn't want them to use them quite yet. They're only eight and 10. So um, my wash compartment has two lines for the amount of detergent. The normal is two or is four tablespoons. The max is six tablespoons. Um, if you use a liquid detergent that you pour, um, we found that it's easier to uh, use a measuring cup instead of trying to use the um the measure inside the cap of the laundry detergent there's something about the viscosity of the laundry detergent that makes it hard to feel when you've reached the appropriate line so it's um it's a little bit more of a challenging skill and it's really probably just easier to get your measuring cup out and utilize that instead of the cap um so that um, is a different story for the liquid softener that seems to be appropriate to be able to feel but if it's easier for your kiddo to be able to use a, um, a measuring cup, that's totally fine. It's really whatever works for your kiddos. So um, for my uh, machine, my washer doesn't work unless this is pushed all the way in and clicks. So if your machine has special features like that, make sure that you teach your kiddo about that. So my machine has a, a drawer where you add water for a steam cycle. If yours has this, make sure you teach your kiddo about this. I don't use that feature uh, a ton. Um, also, make sure that you teach your kiddo about the um, lint filter. Wherever yours is located, how to remove that, how to clean it, and how to put it back. And that needs, make sure you teach them that that needs to happen every single cycle. Um, so right next to my dryer is a trash can. I try to make sure it's in the same spot every single time so everybody can find it really easily. Um, another important feature on your washer and dryer, washing machine and dryer is to make sure that you uh, teach your kiddo about how full the washing machine should be. Um, sometimes kids want to be able to fill it so full that the water um, can't get in there and the clothes can't agitate appropriately. Um, so you need to make sure that you work with them about exactly how full that should be so that their clothes actually get clean. Um, so that's um, a really important skill that our kiddos need. So I hope this is helpful, um, and I hope that if you have an in-home washer and dryer that you guys start working with your kiddos on that a little bit so they can help you keep up with the immense amount of laundry that happens in families. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks.